Pokemon Scarlet and Violet had a fun cast of characters that we got to meet during our adventures through Paldea. But there is an even larger group of characters that we need not travel too far to start forming bonds with. Yep, that's right, the teachers of the Academy. I wouldn't blame anybody for heading off and not looking back once we're told we can find our treasure. In fact, I didn't even take any of the classes until the post-game. I did already talk about Ryford's class when discussing the ruinous legendary Pokemon, but aside from the classes, you are able to interact with the faculty members on your own time. And I was getting a little suspicious when I started seeing phrases like, you formed a close bond, because Pokemon Masters also recently introduced a mode in which you could spend some one-on-one -on -one time with some of the trainers. Before you get too excited, no, you cannot date Nurse Miriam. I'm a teacher and you're my student. But I think it was a cool idea for some little side stories with these characters who don't tie into the main story all that much. So as expected, you start to unlock these little interactions by taking classes or otherwise completing parts of the story. But who boy, these classes were a bit of a drag. I honestly think that some of them work and some of them don't. It all comes down to the fact that these classes are all structured exactly the same. Listen to a brief lecture and answer a single question, then take a midterm. Repeat the lectures and then take a final. This works for classes like History with Ryfort because she's literally relaying information which is genuine lore of the Paldea region. As much as I love Dendra, her class mostly comes down to being a tutorial for battles. At the end of every single class, she says that she was about to begin some hands-on training after a brief lecture, but oh oops, the bell rang and class is over. And most every other class is basically just a tutorial. Salvatore's class is interesting, even though it just mixes a bunch of languages together, until it finally devolves into deciphering Pikachu speech. Look, I can't tell if this Pikachu is happy or not, I just want my A. And even though Times class spills into battle calculations, you still actually have to do math. But it feels really lame to be taking a battle tactics class outside in the field, but never actually do any battling. Why are we shown physical artwork, but all we ever do is answer questions about terrestrialization? How come we never actually make a sandwich despite being in a kitchen? The classes are all treated as if Pokemon were a text-based game. Again, these are all meant to be glorified tutorials, but it would have been nice if some extra effort were put in. Sure, I get that creating a drawing minigame solely for the class would be totally unnecessary, but battles and sandwich making literally exist in the game and everybody will have to do one of them through the course of their playtime. Well, whatever, I did my due diligence and paid attention in class, getting a passing grade. So why not see what all the teachers are up to? Well, Jock doesn't do all that much, he mostly keeps track of your Pokedex progress. But at least we got to hear him speak with Professor Willow in that one trailer. Getting a voice actor cast for you is no small feat. But Jock is still pretty cool, I like that the creator of the Pokedex app has a little more to do. Well, why not officially start things off with Miss Time, the math instructor? She's also actually Rhyme's sister, making them both rhyme and time. Very cool. Time actually used to be the gym leader, but she stepped down to pursue teaching. And so, Rhyme came into the position. We learn this gradually through Time's side story as she tries her best to avoid a student who's a big fan of her from her gym leader days. There's a nice little conclusion just getting to know her better. I do really like the idea of someone who isn't just retired as a gym leader, but has found a new passion in helping raise the future generations of trainers. As I mentioned, I already talked about history class with Ryfort, so I won't spend too much time in this video on her. But just know that I really did enjoy the class and absolutely love her character and design. Though even though she fully trusts me, I don't trust her. And I'm still just trying to figure out what's going on with her hair. Next, we have the language teacher, Salvatore. He's a pretty cool teacher, but if you thought Ryfort's hair was distracting, I cannot stop staring at Salvatore's hairdo. It looks like it's waiting for a Game Boy cartridge to play. One day we find him out in the schoolyard with a lost and injured Pommy. And the rest of his interactions focus on this Pommy as we continue helping him care for it. I think this is a really cute little story as by the end of it, Salvatore ends up keeping the Pommy after learning even more about its situation. Like how it was attacked by another Pokemon and doesn't speak at first. Though when it finally does start speaking again, it's enthusiastic about staying with him. This one reminds me of some of the quests we saw in Legends Arceus, specifically where we end up either giving a Pokemon to a villager or help them befriend one. I just think it's cool getting to see how a friendship between a person and a Pokemon begins. Salvatore himself is cool too. Being someone who's learned a lot of languages, it makes sense for him to be patient enough to understand someone else, which we see in how he cares for Pommy. Then comes the battle instructor, Dendra, and ooh boy, I've been looking forward to this. We find her in the schoolyard and she invites us to run a few laps around the track. Afterwards, she offers us some of a sandwich she made and it is not very good. 
absolutely devastating. It's alright, Dendra, I'm a sandwich master, I can make lunch for you. I find it funny that this turns out being her story, as we find she just wants to get better at making sandwiches. Again, this is a cute idea, because we come to learn through class that Dendra is your typical fighting type trainer. Eager to battle, though maybe a bit too eager, in the way that she's a bit distracted from something else, so maybe that's what she wants to do, learn a different skill. Because we learn that really her hobby is just working out. Oh, also that she's 25, write that down, write that down. I also love that we get to see some interactions between different staff members, as Saguaro accurately assesses her cooking talent as non-existent. And we later find out that she wanted to get better at making sandwiches as a way to help somebody else. Specifically to repay Miriam, the school nurse, for all that she's done for her. That just makes it even better because we get a sense of their history. Also, for a moment it seems like Dendra had a bit of the twitchy hair glitch going on. But now that I've formed a strong bond with Dendra, I've gotten all I wanted out of this game. So, uh, video over. Channel deleted. Bye. Nah, I'm just kidding. I won't be satisfied until she makes it to Pokemon Masters. Anyway, now we have the art teacher, Hassel. We got to know him quite a bit during the main story as he is one of the Elite Four members and is even the one who encourages us to take the classes in the first place. I do like how one class session is even dedicated to having Brassius as a guest, because he is an artist after all, and it gives some more backstory to them both as they're very close, even having nicknames for each other. Hmm... But afterwards, Hassel reveals that he comes from a long line of dragon trainers, and that he chose to be a teacher rather than take his place as the head of a family. From what we know of other dragon-type trainers also coming from long lineages, it makes sense and kind of further adds to the lore of just how many clans or families there might be. Though I guess we won't find out too much about Hassel's family because in the end he decides to remain a teacher at the school. And out of all teachers, he does seem like one of the most dedicated. So hearing how he's constantly pressured to leave his position and fall into the role he's expected to really says something about how strong his dedication is. The last teacher is the home ec instructor, Saguaro. He tells me that apparently I'm the talk of the town as he hears the other students discussing me when not in class. And immediately, I get the cool teacher vibes from him. Because he says that his room is one where students hang out when classes aren't in session. And even when he's minding his own business, everybody can't help but marvel at him. I've had this exact type of teacher at my schools before. And I totally agree, this dude is cool. I couldn't help but laugh when he nearly ordered a spicy sandwich because that's what everybody thought he would order when he really just wanted peanut butter. Don't worry, pal, I've got your back. Order that peanut butter sandwich. And while she isn't a teacher yet, we can meet and interact with Nurse Miriam. And I've seen what you're all posting on Twitter about her. When we first meet Miriam, she mostly tells us how we can stop by anytime we need to. But we soon discover that she doesn't just want to be the school nurse, she wants to be a teacher. And is even working on studying for the certification exam. Even going a little tsundere about it because I'm totally the one that inspired her to. Though because she doesn't actually teach a class, it feels like this happens pretty quickly. As the next time we meet her, she's already passed the exam and will become the health teacher during the next semester, which we might not get to see in this game. But the fact that we get to meet a character who wants to excel beyond their current position is great to see. Again, just something realistic and relatable. And lastly, we can form a bond with Clavel, though I feel like most of the groundwork is done during the Team Star storyline, which I do think is done pretty well. But as for the dedicated bond interactions, he just wants to check in with you about the students or the school while in his office. Though I make sure to tell him that Dendra is my favorite teacher. And at the end of it, he gives us a big nugget. So now after having formed close bonds with the school staff, I can finally stand here and do not much else. We are keeping it professional here. But I did really enjoy all these extra little stories we got to experience at the school. I do hope that this type of thing is expanded in future Pokemon games where we have additional interactions with characters. Maybe just add them for characters we see more often throughout the main story, and possibly add some better rewards for completing. There could really be something here. This is something we see in other RPGs which Game Freak was no doubt inspired by. Though I feel like having Pokemon Masters being so well received also influences. this. I think the Pokemon company is slowly realizing that their human characters have a lot of appeal behind them and not just the Pokemon. This was a good starting point for Pokemon games. Though I feel that there's a bit of disconnect in the sense that there's all this to do at the school, but there's also this gigantic region to explore. I don't know how many people would really do both the classes and the main stories progressively alongside each other like the developers intended. Like I said, I finished the main story and then did all the classes back to back. But for what it was, I really enjoyed my time at the Academy. So let me know which teachers and interactions were your favorites. Now if you'll excuse me, it's time to make a sandwich with Dendra. Thank you to every channel member for your continued support, especially the Great Gators. Cheeseburger Lasers, Gavnuts, Justin R, Cosmo Zero, Michaela, Mr. Pig Puncher, Phantom Pyro, Quago, Volity, and Pastel Blood. If you would like to support, get your name shouted out here as well as access to emotes and comments, live streams, and some early videos, you can become a channel member today. You can also follow me on Twitter as well, but anyway, this has been Gatorx, and I'll catch you all later.
Looking for a great reason to go to school? Then make sure your school enters the Poke Readorama by March 2nd, and you and your schoolmates can win the chance to host the world premiere of Pokemon Free the Movie in your very own school auditorium. Or if you and your classmates read the most books in the Poke Readorama during the month of March, your school can win a private screening of Pokemon Free the Movie, Pokemon Stadium 2 games, and a chance to appear on TV as host of a kid's WB Saturday morning. Make sure your teacher enters your school in the Poke Readorama by March 2nd for your chance to win.